I want to talk to you about awesome native apps with uh, native script and Angular. Um, because of the team, this is a picture for me, drafted by the Dutch Army. You can see this is me. I would have died probably with the first predator attack, but that's okay. This is me 26 years ago. Um, introducing myself, I'm a senior software developer at Nationaal Nederlanden, a large uh, Dutch insurance company. Um, I'm also a freelance web uh, developer. Um, I'm a curator of nativescript.nl, a website with tips and, and courses about NativeScript. And I'm also a, a Telerik developer expert for NativeScript. Um, let's first talk about what is NativeScript. NativeScript is an open source framework for building truly native web apps, but with JavaScript. JavaScript. Um, you use it together with markup, it, that could be XML or HTML, and you style it with CSS, just like you would do on a website. And if you want, you can e actually use native code also. I will show an example later on. And it's cross-platform, so you have one code base for your app on Android and on iOS. It's definitely not PhoneGap or Ionic. Uh, because there is no document object model like they have, because they are running actually running in a in a web view in a browser. So there are also no HTML elements that are styled like looking native. They are real native uh, components. It's also not React native. There's another talk later on about React native, um, because you have to do a lot of more stuff to directly use the native API of the platform, and it's easier to do with native script. It's also not Xamarin, because Xamarin is done with .NET and C Sharp, um, and you have to cross-compile it. There are many flavors of JavaScript you can use. You can use the plain one, you can use TypeScript if you want. You can use Angular. You can use Vue. And they're even working on Preact at the moment. So there's probably something in there what, what serves your needs. For me, the solution was Angular. Angular 2 and up, actually. Uh, because it, it makes you focus on what you want to do in the app. Um, Angular had a lot of, has a lot of upsides, saying, well, it's object-oriented, there are classes, there's a certain way you have to work to get it uh, properly working, but they also have very good routing and also dependency injection and one- and two-way data binding, so you don't have to think about that your, uh, yourself. How does it actually work? Um, on top, you have your application code written in any flavor of JavaScript. And that application code can directly run on the, JV, uh, on the NativeScript runtime, the orange one, but it can also run through NativeScript modules. And those NativeScript modules could be something like, um, sorry, I have to look a bit, could be something like an HTTP uh, uh, module that's already in the core modules of NativeScript itself. But also, a lot of people make plugins to uh, be able to do stuff like accessing the camera or GPS and stuff like that. So that's also nat that those are also NativeScript modules. And in the end, the NativeScript runtime runs on a virtual JavaScript engine. And in Android, that's V8. And in iOS, it's uh, JavaScript core. A little bit of history. It's, it's not out there very long. Um, but the first idea was about 2013. They were thinking about an alternative for hybrid apps, like what you had in the time and still have PhoneGap and stuff like Ionic. So in two, June 2014, they announced that they were going to uh, 
build something that could really compete with native. The company is Telerik. It's a Bulgarian company located in Sofia. Um, and at the end of 2014, they were acquired by Progress Software. That's a, a really big company from the US with over 30 years of experience in uh, software development and software, uh, making software easier to use for developers. In May 2015, version 1.0 was launched. Um, it was really buggy, but the, the progress was there. So they decided to keep on working on it. And a year later, they launched version 2.0 with a very close and tight coupling to Angular 2. Um, as I showed before, you don't have to use Angular but it has benefits. And you see the pattern here. A year later, in 2017, they launched version 3.0, and that version is really, uh, was really focused on performance, especially on Android. Um, and probably, I think, in 2018, May 2018, we might have version 4. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the concept of NPM, Node Package Manager, but NativeScript relies very on that because just like in web development, you can use all kinds of packages from uh, the Node Package Manager. Um, I looked at it yesterday. There's a lot of pre-built code already there, and it has about 530,000 NPM packages that you potentially can use in your app. There are not all that great, but there are really good ones out there. And you can use especially packages that are built for native script, like plugins, as I said, to uh, connect to the camera, for instance. But you can also use native script packages, uh, sorry, JavaScript packages, like things like, um, yeah, things like Moment.js, where you can do uh, stuff with dates easily, uh, and it's, it's uh, you can integrate it in your app. But you can also use things from Android Arsenal or from Cocoa Pods. Actually, a lot of plugins use these behind the scenes to get things done. Okay, how to start? First step is you have to install Node.js because, as I said, everything runs on the Node Package Manager. You can just download this and install it. Um, if you want to uh, create iOS applications, I'm sorry, you have to buy a MacBook or something like that, because still Apple wants that. And then you go to the command line and install NativeScript CLI with the npm install slash uh, dash g to install it globally on your machine, and native script. <coughs> After that, you have to install some requirements, some additional stuff. You have to install uh, Angular Studio, for instance, for, uh, oh, sorry, um, Android Studio to be able to uh, make Android apps. But they really thought about it and made two scripts. The uh, above one is for iOS and the lower one is for, uh, sorry, the above one is on Mac and the other one is on Windows. And if all goes well, cross your fingers, you can verify the setup with TNS. TNS stands for Telescript, Telerik Native Script. Um, you use TNS on the command line very uh, often to get things done. But with TNS Doctor, it will uh, look at your system and see if everything that you need is installed there. And if you go to the native script CLI, if you want to create a new app, you will run TNS create and then your project name in this case, hello world. And I added dash dash ng here to get an Angular project out of the box. You can also add another um, argument for uh, using a predefined template, for instance. If you want to run your app, well, you have to go to the 
appropriate directory, of course. Uh, you can run TNS run iOS or TNS run Android, and it will run on each connected device or simulator that you have running on your machine. Only but in there is that if you want to run it on your iPhone, but that's not different than, than native development, you have to do the stuff with certificates and provisioning files to get it running on your local uh, connected device. Um, I want to show you stuff now. First off, about layouts and native elements. Is this readable? Okay. Um, we have markup. In this case, I want to have an action bar on top. I just define it as HTML, as an action bar with a title. And below that, I have a stack layout. I will explain the different layouts later on. But I just have a text there saying, hello, Oots. Is that correctly pronounced? <sighs> and you get something like this. Yay, but it doesn't look nice. So you can style it with CSS. If you look at this, I'm not saying it looks very nice after this, but you can style directly on that element the action bar saying, well, the background should be yellow, the stack layout, so what the page is, should have some padding on all sides. Uh, we use device independent pixels here. Uh, but we don't have to specify PX for pixels like you would do on a, we on a, on a website. So you say 50, uh, 40 uh, padding, align the text center, and the label itself should be a font size of 20 pixels and should be red. And it looks something like this. Already more beautiful, but not shippable, I think. Um, let's look at layouts. Um, the first one is a stack layout, and basically is that you stack stuff on each other, uh, on top of each other, or you, like in this case, you do it horizontally. If I would drop the orientation is horizontal there, it would stack from top to bottom. We also can have a, uh, an absolute layout. In this case, I've defined that the top label should be 40 pixels from the left and 30 from the top, and the other one should be 70 left and 80 top, and it looks something like this. The dock layout. Um, I'll show the example uh, with that. Um, you can say something should be at the top or the bottom or the left or the right, and in this case, I've put left as last one in the, in, the, in the doc layout and set the property stretch last child. That means that the left one, the red one, will use all the space it can take. We have the grid layout. I don't know if you have done anything on the web, but grid layout is essentially sa the same as tables. So there's a lot of code here. The, on top it said columns 100, auto, and X. That means I have a first column will be 100 pixels wide. The second one will be as wide uh, as it needs to be. And the, and the uh, asterisk says, well, use everything you uh, have left there. And the same counts for the rows. So 100 pixels, auto, and take everything else. Uh, per label, then you have to say, OK, in which row and which column is my uh, is, is, is my label, and you have also have call span and row span, so you can make something like this. I'm not sure if it's something you want to use, but it, it's, it is possible. We have the wrap layout. Oh, the picture is already there. Um, in this case, the wrap will say, well, just use all the, all the space you have, and in this case it's vertical, so it will start from top to bottom, and, if, and then when it reaches the bottom, it just goes to top again. If you would uh, leave this out, it would go from left to right and then to the next line. Um, the last one is, some, uh, is a layout that's not been there a long time because 
it was re uh, requested from the well from the web developers actually because we wanted to do Flexbox also on a mobile phone. Uh, and in this case, with Flexbox, you can rearrange uh, the stuff pretty easily. And on the, on the top, it says Flex Direction Row Reverse. That means everything is in a row, and my first item in there, in there will be on the right. Normally, it would be from left to right. This is from right to left. And I have some attributes saying Flex Grow. That means I uh, put it from one to six. So the first one has a particular width, and the second one will be twice as big, the third one, th uh, three times, four times, five times, five times, six times. Um, but you can use many more uh, Flexbox uh, attributes to get your stuff done. Now we're going to the scary part for me. Um, I'm going to show you something about layouts native elements and uh, how you can use uh, native code. So I'm going to switch. The beauty of native script, one of the beautiful things about native script that I really appreciate is that um, when you're developing, it's live syncing all the time. So on the right hand side for you, I have an iOS simulator, iPhone 7 Plus, and on the left side I have VS Code um, to try stuff. So the first thing I want to do is to uh, um, add an action bar. And if you use VS Code, it has lovely plugins that generate code for you. So if I hit save here, it refreshes and it has an action bar. Um, let's Add an image. And of course, I have an appropriate image there. Save it. And it's there. But the beauty is you can also use CSS, as I mentioned. So I have here, I have some CSS. Um, and in CSS, you also have transformations and animations. Uh, so what I did here is I have an animation called spin. And what this, that does is just infinite rotate um, something you defined with the attribute spin. So if I go to back here and give it a, just like on the web, a class saying it's class spin, save it. Then it's rotating. You can also use uh, JavaScript animations and also uh, some native animations like uh, page transitions. I'm going to kill this one. and show you some um, form elements. So I start with a stack layout just to get it from top to bottom. I remove the image. First off, I would enter or would position a label there and say first, hello. And Save it. Yeah, it says hello, but it's not nice, is it? The, the thing is, they also provide something called native script team cores. So if you're no hero in CSS, but you want to have some nice looking um, UI, you can use one of the, those cores, team cores. And I took the blue one. And now the action bar is blue. But I also can say, well, this label has a class of H1. In, in the web environment, it's header 1. It looks already better. And they also have a class named center. 
So it's in the center now. Um, but I need some air. It's too close there, so I can also use a class here named page. And it gives me some more room about there. Um, let's add a horizontal rule. So there's a line be under there. Um, you want to have an input field, and that's called in NativeScript it's called a text field. You can enter a hint. And I also give it a class of input field. And it's not visible. That's nice. <laughs> Don't do live coding, right? I have to put this in another stack layout called form. Let me see, are we getting more there? No. Then we're going to cheat a little. Oh yeah, it's, I see what I did wrong. I put it within the horizontal rule. So. So here now I have an input field with a with a hint in there, um, but also we would like to have, for instance, have a switch. And I can say if it's checked or not. If I leave it, probably leave it that. Yes, it's already false. You can see I can. Oh yeah, sorry, I s I saved it. I can use a native component to use this switch, and it's not uh, not not in an uh, HTML view, for instance. And we have buttons, of course, also. And I can give a, a tap event on that. So maybe I call it on tap button. And if I define this function into, in this case, uh, an Angular TypeScript file, I can say for instance, you tapped me. It will refresh again. And you could see that the button is a native iOS button, which in my opinion, isn't the button. So <laughs> let's give a, a glass of button there. And also button primary to give it a nice color. And there we have a button. And if I hit that, I get a native alert box saying, you tap me. OK. Um, I need to go to the home page to show you other stuff. So we also can uh, add links uh, from page to page. And for time's sake, I'm going to just copy that. So I here have a label with this is partly Angular. Router link is something from Angular that you can bind to a specific uh, internal page. Uh, for native script, they entered uh, NS before that because it has to do some, some different stuff. But I actually uh, define a route here to the home page. And this text wrap true has no purpose now. But if you have a long text, it will wrap around from, uh, it will start again on the next line to make sure everything is, uh, is readable. So I should get a link now to the home page. Yeah, it's not pretty, but it will, it will work. 
if I hit that, I'm in this one. This looks nicer, right? This is more what you were, would expect. Um, and I told you I would show you some native code. So if I go to sliders in this case, uh, on top you see a, def a default slider. Um, native UI, so it works incredibly good. And this is the same one, but I want to make that a custom slider. For that I have to uh, manipulate with native code. It's not something I do on a daily basis. So what, what, how can you do that? Um, you can see, let me see here, the slider is the same as the one above, but it has an extra property there called slider icon. And in Angular you can build directives, and with that you can manipulate stuff. So what I do here is I will select anything that has the name slider icon in it. And because I'm writing iOS code, I put in a if is iOS, because otherwise Android mo might crash, uh, crash on it. Um, let me close this. And the beauty of native script is that you can uh, address native elements uh, in your JavaScript. So in this case, I'm saying, well, get me the UI slider uh, in iOS, I, uh, uh, and then I can use iOS um, functions and properties. So in this case, I said, well, the, uh, the UI slider and the UI image and UI control state is all native code. I say, give me uh, the slider thump image, make that an image called mobilization.png. And I see I have to change something in the routing because we're getting going back to the, that demo page. We don't want that. We want to be at the home page. So change this. You didn't see this. I, I prepared it very well, so you didn't see this. If I go to sliders now, you see that the bottom one is a local slider. Um, so you can go crazy, crazy if you want to. Um, okay. I go back to Keynote now. Um, talking about multilingual. Thank you. Um, it's pretty easy to make your app multilingual um, with Angular and NativeScript because in, in Angular you have something called NGX Translate and NGX Translate is an internationalization library for Angular 2 and, and higher and what you do is you define your content in different languages in different JSON files and you can switch between them pretty easy. So this is an example from the app you just saw. I have a JSON file in English saying, well, on the home page, I have a title called Mobilization 7, and it has a tagline, whoever wins, we win, and etc. If I want to use that, I define a label, and the text has square brackets around it, that means it's uh, one-way binding in Angular, so it can be uh, modified when the page is loaded. In this case, I want to have the home.tagline there, and there's a pipe symbol after that and saying translate. This is, for Angular, uh, a recognition that he should use ngx translate to put the tagline there. If you're doing it wrong, you would see in your label home dot tagline. Um, we discovered that it's best to start immediately with multilingual. Also, if you're only uh, using one language, uh, because you will never ever uh, define text uh, in in your pages anymore. It will be all, all be in one place. So, 
if you have to change something, you don't have to look for it. It's in one place. Again, some live coding for multilingual. Close some things up. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm going to use some of the other layouts now, in this case a grid layout. And I say it has one row, so actually I don't have to provide it here. And I want to have oh, two columns and also give it some space from the top. So I already, already defined the class that said padding top 40. And in there I would like to have a button. Also with classes saying this case, these are not from the team course, but I defined them myself. So I call them not BTN, but button. And I can say here English. Oh. And you see here a tap event. So I can call a function again, saying, for instance, change language. And I give a parameter here, en. And I can do the same, for instance, for Polish. Is that called Polska? Yeah. OK. <laughs> it's not my native language. You know? <laughs> so I have defined two buttons here to change language. If I save them, they should appear on the screen. The only, ah, oh, yeah. Um, with grid layout, you have to uh, to say in which position they are, otherwise they will overlap each other. So this one is in row zero and call zero. And the other one is also on row zero, but in call one. So we now I have two buttons next to each other. But if I hit those buttons, nothing will happen because change language doesn't exist. So I go to my JavaScript code. And I define the function change language. And I say lang is my parameter of type, in this case, type string. Um, but to be able to use these tra uh, uh, translations, I have to import something from NGX Translate. In this case, I have to import the translate service. doesn't like it. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I need to put these around it. And I have to inject it in the constructor of this component of this page. So I have a sorry, um, copy a little bit. I have a private variable called translate translate service from type translate service and now in the change language I can say this dot translate service dot use so which language do I want to use and insert the language there and if all goes well fingers crossed I should be able to switch to Polish and no, of course, it doesn't work. That's live coding, right? Let me have a quick look. Just uh, on the safe side, I just copy paste the code. And 
also the grid layout. Honestly, it did work, but not not just now. That's it, Polsky now. Sorry, and there it is. Yeah, Whew. Uh, sorry. I don't want to offend you. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well, so if I change, you see whoever wins, we win. I'm not sure that's Google Translate. I'm not sure if it's okay, but it's something. And if I look at the menu, it's also translated in Google Translate Polish. Um, I'm going to move on. Talk a little bit about plugins and show you something plugins, no live coding there. Um, because there are very bright people who need some, uh, some stuff for their own projects. For instance, a native script video player. Uh, so they write a plugin, and for me as a simple mortal, it's easy to use. I just call the video player, give a source to it, a height, and maybe autoplay. And on Android, it will use the media player, and on iOS, it will use the AV player. Yeah. Um, for my own sake, I will put it back to English. So, short example of a video. Let's rotate a bit. And if you're fami familiar with the Alien and Predator series, you must recognize this one. Switching a little bit back again. <laughs> You're going to do a lot of that, sorry. <laughs> um, also, text to speech. Um, you can define uh, stuff and use text on speech. I'm running out of time, I see, so let me just show you what it looks like because I have something else I want to show you. So, if I go to text to speech, um, this is a fragment from the Alien movie saying... So I can define it in US English. And in Polish, but I'm not sure if that's correct. I'm not sure, but <laughs> I hope it's out. Um, but you can also use sound. So there's a plugin for sounds, and I'm not sure if the audio is going to handle it, but I made my own soundboard here. all built on shoulders of, of other people's work. I will switch to this one now, because I don't want to... Um, I'm not sure if this is going to work. It did work yesterday evening, but it didn't work when I tried it there, so let me try. Test. It repeats what I'm saying, but I'm not sure if you hear, can hear it. But I can also do something like, let's share a selfie. Let's share a selfie. And it, yeah, sure. It should open the camera. <laughs> and then we could take a selfie. And I could use social, sh social share as also plugin and put it on Twitter. That was my goal, but unfortunately, Live demos, right? Let me show you something else. Because we can also use Bluetooth. Let me see if it's connected. Do you have a green chest? Yep, yeah, it's connected. 
So I can, uh, it, it can make about 100 uh, different noises, so I can take randomly one. Oh. But I can also make his chest let uh, change color, just randomly of 64, uh, 64 million colors. Um, it takes a lot of the, so it, it changed a little bit. And it can also wink at you, so saying hello to you all. But the most fun thing is you can use it to run around. I think it's a military parade, right? Let me see if you can hold it. Okay. And I can use my mobile phone to say, well, I, I'm, I'm missing some parade music here, but. And if he likes you, he comes and says, hi, how are you doing? Oh. Ah, uh, that's okay, otherwise. <laughs> Turns around. Oh, that's, we'll pick that up later. But you can use um, Bluetooth Low Energy to use stuff like this. And unfortunately, that's all I have time off for. But um, if you want to know more, there's a lot of resources online you can, uh, you can ask me later. And if you like, I also have stickers here to promote my own website. And thank you for being here. Uh, hello. Uh, I Hi. want to know if I can use Canvas and uh, graphic hardware acceler acceleration. Sorry, again? Uh, if I can use uh, uh, HTML5 Canvas Oh. Um, hardware acceleration. There, there is a plugin for that. Yeah, you can, you can use that, um, but it's, it's an experimental phase now. So, there, uh, I know there is a plugin, for instance, that you can use. I wanted to show this one. Um, you can use to, uh, for instance, uh, draw your autograph on, and that's using uh, a, a canvas. Uh, what about the performance? Uh, that's, fr that's really good. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Trust me on that. <laughs> I'm going to get my friend here. Anyone else? Um, maybe I've got one. Um, yes, sure. Uh, is it possible to integrate it with a native application? So let's say I've got already an iOS application and I want to use it for some views. Yes, you can. Yeah. Okay. You, uh, but it, that's also done with uh, hybrid, for instance. There's also combinations of hybrid and native. And you can also do it with this, yeah. You can gradually move from, for instance, native to native script, yeah. And how is it to start building these apps? Because I heard some stories about React Native that basically the basic setup is kind of complicated for both Android and iOS. Um, I'm not sure how valid it's, it's now, but at the beginning it was kind of painful. Well, uh, the one thing I uh, noticed is it can be painful with, with Android if you in install that on your, on your MacBook. Um, but it all comes down to setting the right path uh, parameters. And if you follow the, the in, install scripts I, I mentioned, 95% uh, of the do job is done. And after that you can just, I'm not supposed to say just, but you can just generate a new project and run it. So it's, it's easier than getting provisioning files and stuff like that. Cool, thank you very much.